We're on Montana Highway 83. We just came upon a vehicle that says wide load, prepare to stop. And we went around it. Going not quite the nighttime speed limit on this wildlife infested highway. Second Valley down from the Continental Divide. Lots of wildlands around here. And uh, looks like we might be coming up on the back side of the mega load. And it is about 10.48 on Sunday, August 24th. And again, we are on the Swan Highway 83. Very remote stretch of highway. Looks like we're at mile post 66. Very low speed limit on this highway uh, due to the numerous wildlife crossings, especially at night. So you might be able to see a little flashing lights ahead. And it looks like we got a mega load ahead of us. And it is now 9.49 and we're getting slowed down to, oh my, about 20 miles an hour maybe. Let's see how long this goes on. There's only uh, one passenger vehicle in front of us and uh, this truck with the flashing diamonds. More or less driving down the middle of the road. We're at mile post 65. Now 9.50, as you can see, we're crawling along at about, well, not even 20. It's not even a steady pace. It's sort of speed up, slow down. But 20 is about top end, it looks like. You can sort of see the megalode far up ahead. If we zoom in a little bit here. As we're going around the curve. And we apologize for the wiggliness of it. We did notice uh, as soon as we came from Missoula County into Lake County, around the town of Condon here on Montana Highway 83, the roads became remarkably in poorer condition. A lot of patching up of this highway surface. Now we're at a complete stop. It looks like the flagger is getting out of his truck, coming back to talk to us uh, more or less. Stalled vehicles.
Hello. Hi, where are you heading? I'm heading down to Missoula. Okay. We're going to get try to get you around. Okay. And uh, so stay on this lady and she'll get around and you, we'll try to go. So just follow this car in front of me? Okay. Okay. Thank Thanks. You. How long do you think it'll be? As soon as I get a wide spot, the road, the thing is, why is this road? Okay, thank you. Well, folks, now it's 9.53, and I guess we are following the vehicles in front of us. It sounded like, although you can barely hear it, the scheme is that he's going to pull over. It sounded like that flagger with the flashing diamonds and let this passenger vehicle in front of us around. I don't know. Here comes an oncoming Passenger vehicle, it looks like pickup truck. So we are following slowly behind, a little faster now, but then of course, uh, you know, about 30, we're uh, pretty far behind the megalit at this point because we got stalled. I wonder if that reset the clock for uh, being delayed, uh, but we could be coming up on 10 minutes here, which is the rule, not 15 like in Idaho here pretty soon. Oh, now we're slowing down again. You can see other uh, vehicles with flashing lights up ahead know what's going on with that but you guys are under the microscope so um, maybe I should start honking when the 10 minutes is up because it feels like you're gonna blow it on this road And Highway 83, by the way, is very remote. Uh, it's only two lanes wide. It looks like these particular lanes are 12 feet, not 16 feet wide, like on interstates. And uh, lots of wildlife. Only the second valley down from the Continental Divide. Plenty of wildland. In fact, just to our left is about, well, more than a million acres of wilderness. And that doesn't even count the... Uh, all the wildlands surrounding it. Swan Range is on our left and uh, the Mission Range a little further south and that's the direction we're heading is on our right. So it's a spectacular wildlands area and uh, Friends of the Wild Swan has voiced concerns that animals could get hit with this whole operation tonight uh, as this load travels from milepost 77.7 down to just a little bit shy, about two, uh, three tenths of a mile shy of uh, the Clearwater Junction where Highway 83 intersects, more or less has a T intersection with uh, Montana Highway 200. These are both state highways, not very well maintained here in Lake County. Although, uh, so it looks like we have a SUV with the trailer pulled over on the side of the road there. Assuming they were pulled over by flaggers. So, uh, no such thing as megalodes pulling over. It's all about getting everybody else to pull over in Montana, apparently. Unlike in Idaho, where they have to pull over to clear traffic, although they pull a lot of fun stunts there as well. 
So uh, we were up to, I'd say about 35 miles an hour. We're slowing down now again to about 20, 25. And it's uh, 9.57. And uh, yeah, we got about two minutes. Get that piece of junk out of the road there, guys. Are you going to be breaking your transportation plan and therefore the law? Since, uh, after all, that transportation plan is a contract with the state to break the law. Okay, well. Don't know what to tell you. Now, there, it looks like there's another two vehicles behind us. Look like regular uh, passenger vehicles, although it's difficult to tell whether they're part of the convoy. Flaggers that may be following this mess. Not the most exciting video in the world, following along. A couple vehicles down the road, but hey. It's uh, important documentation in this whole process, which uh, we hope this route does not become standard fare industrial corridor through or next to some of the biggest wildlands in the northern Rockies. Yes, indeed, crawling along about 20 miles an hour. Oh, that clock is a ticking. And we're about to hit the 10 minute mark. And this is facilitated by uh, Montana State Police, as we can see from the uh, flashing blue and red lights up ahead of us. Facilitators are not only breaking the law, but global climate change. Uh, general ruination of air, water, and land quality. Well, there you go, folks. 9.59. 10 minutes, and we're still dragging behind this thing. Shall we go for 20? What do you think? Because you are already busted big crane and rigging and mountain west and sort of see the convoy up ahead I suppose if we uh, zoom in a little bit here you can see it better At one point, actually along Swan Lake, as we took a break, it's very quiet. It's a beautiful, clear, starlit night. It's about, oh, 52 out, a little cooler than usual for this time of the summer. You could hear this megalode echoing across the lake miles and miles away. All right, so we're moving down to an even slower crawl, a little under 20. Looks like they might be pulling things over up here. Let's see what's happening. Uh, since they would have to change the highway, that was uh, that whole situation was uh, obligated to be under review by the Montana Environmental Policy Act, as well as likely, if it got carried up to that level, the National Environmental Policy Act. Well, we're not quite in Missoula County yet. 
but we certainly didn't have any folks from Missoula show up for these protests and monitoring. We might have missed people up in the Swan Lake area because we uh, sort of got blocked by the oncoming megalode and we're arriving late due to a little bit of TV coverage. But, uh, yeah, where's the turnouts, guys? How's that 10 minute rule? We got you documented breaking it pretty badly. Time is now 10.02. Crawling along oh, about 15, 20 miles an hour. Even slower, now down to 10. It looks like we have still, of course, one vehicle in front. Luckily, to shield us from all the glaring lights of this convoy, which have caused accidents in the past. Uh, and it looks like there's about, oh, maybe three vehicles behind us. Could be more. Hard to tell unless we hit a curve here. Uh, we're cruising along at about 20 miles an hour right now. It's 10.03. Oh my, we're up to 30 even almost. Woohoo! Yes, indeed. So, Montanans, maybe you should be taking your uh, Department of Transportation to task because they are blowing it. Letting this convoy through. Letting them break the 10 minute rule for stalling traffic. And of course, we can't get close enough to see uh, them driving on the shoulder and doing other things that we've seen convoys and megaloads do in Idaho, which tears up our roads pretty badly. Noticed uh, the Highway 95 Long Bridge just south of Sandpoint was a lot bouncier after that megalode went through. We're now at milepost 60 on Montana Highway 83 in the Swan Valley. And of course, uh, the morning after the megalode went over, there was a fatal, really gruesome, uh, head-on collision between a uh, passenger vehicle and a semi-truck. <coughs> we can't help, <coughs> we don't know what caused that collision, but we can't help but wonder if it had anything to do with the bouncier uh, character of the road that we noticed after the fact, causing somebody to jump lanes and have a head-on. Well, whenever we get around this monster, we'll be hunting for some water. One of those basics of life, which means if we have to pass this thing again, we will have another opportunity to uh, catch them red-handed, uh, not following the transportation plan. Crawling along about 20. Although, you know, it's not even a steady clip. It's very uh, sort of start and stop. Somewhere between about oh, 10 miles an hour and 25. And this, uh, this mega load supposedly is capable of going between 5 and 35 miles an hour. Uh oh, we got the arrow to go around, it would appear. So around we will go, following a pilot car now, albeit not that speedily. We're going next to this aero truck, being driven by the flagger that we talk with. There's a wand that he's waving out his window. 
and we're following a passenger car that's following a pilot vehicle and uh, we haven't gone around the load yet so I don't know if we can uh, call it around yet in terms of time going past a state trooper past an impatient wand waving flagger Oh, slow down quickly. Yeah, that's what you get for getting impatient. And in front of him, there's an oversized load flashing light vehicle. And uh, the mega load still doesn't look like it's pulled over and out of the way. And we're looking at a uh, 1007. There you have it. Creeping along about five miles an hour. Poor passenger vehicle in front of us is driving on the shoulder. Not interested in going there. Still not around the load, folks, and it's way past 10 minutes. So are we being instructed to drive on the shoulder? Is that this uh, how it's working? What, what does that do to uh, the quality of our highways here? Not looking good, guys. Yep, look at that. Oh, and now we're stopped over the white line. Still. And uh, the load's going over. Can't really see the name of the creek. Going slow. Oh, I think it's Goat Creek. That comes out of a great wilderness area. There's a biggie truck there. I said it right, biggie. For all those people that are angry that I can't seem to say it right purposely. Well, looky here. We're going around the load. And the time is 10.09. Spank you very much, Megalode. We think you blew it. And we're having to drive on the side of the road to get around you. Nice job, and you didn't even stop, did you? Not looking good, guys. So here we have another uh, flashing truck vehicle. You can't really see ahead of us so much, um, but we're <laughs> we're driving in the wrong lane. How safe is that? And we're going. Uh, let's see. Oh, 45 miles an hour. Oh, good. I feel totally safe, guys. Oh yeah, here's another flashing uh, something, who knows. And uh, I guess we can get in the right lane now, who knows. And here is the uh, follow me pilot truck. That's about it folks.